Hello everyone and welcome to Bridge is for Everyone. My name's Jad. This is episode 51 of the Learn to Play series. This episode looks at the conventions used when leading as defender against a suit contract. In the previous episode, you learned about leading against no trump contracts. In that situation, you were looking to establish suits and win tricks with your long suits. You could do this because a trick could only be won by a card in the same suit as the card led. But in suit contracts, tricks can also be won with trumps. This has two very important consequences. First, in non-trump suits, a maximum of two to three tricks in each suit will be won by a card in that suit. The rest will be won by trumps. And second, you should try to establish your trumps as winners instead of your long suits. As you learned in previous episodes, Declarer's plan always includes a step to quickly eliminate your trumps. This leads to two important principles for you. First, do not help Declarer to eliminate your trumps. This means under almost all circumstances, do not lead trumps. And second, win tricks with your trumps quickly before they are eliminated. Let's look at an example. To make our decisions as difficult as possible, in this episode, we will assume that partner has not bid a suit and that only one suit has been bid by our opponents, the trump suit. This is example one. The contract is four hearts by east. As you saw in the previous episode, against a no trump contract, you would lead the three of hearts. But this time, you apply the first convention principle and won't lead hearts because it is the trump suit. But which suit will you lead? You apply the second principle. You want to win your trumps quickly. But first, you need to establish your trumps as winners. You do this by creating a void in a suit that is not trumps. In bridge, we call non-trump suits side suits. You can immediately create a void by leading a worthless singleton. You lead the eight of spades. You know that partner will return your opening spade lead as soon as possible. If this is done while you still have trumps, you should be able to win the next trick with a heart. Now, let's look at a slightly different example. This is example two. Everything is the same, except that your singleton spade is the ace. Should you still lead the singleton? The answer is yes. The singleton ace will win the trick, establish a potential trump trick for the future, and ask partner to lead this suit as soon as possible. Now let's look at another slight variation. This is example three. Everything is the same, except that your singleton spade is the king. Should you still lead the singleton? This time, the answer is no. Do not lead the king, because it may win a trick in the future, especially if Declarer holds the ace-queen and tries to finesse. Now let's look at another slight variation. This is example four. Again, everything is the same, except that your singleton spade is the queen. Should you lead the singleton? This time, the answer is yes. 
There is a very small chance that the Queen will win a trick, but this is outweighed by the advantages of establishing your trumps. Now let's adjust the example a little more. This is example five. This time the singleton spade is replaced with a worthless doubleton. It will take two spade tricks to establish a void in spades. So should you still lead a spade? The answer is yes. With nothing else of value in your hand, you should try to establish your trumps. But which spade should you lead? With a worthless doubleton, the convention is to lead the higher card first. Now let's adjust the example again. This is example six. This time, the doubleton spade is replaced with three worthless cards. All your side suits consist of three worthless cards. So which suit should you lead? This time, the answer is any of the side suits. But whichever suit you choose, lead the lowest card. The reason for this will be discussed in detail in a future episode. But for now, just note that this makes a three card suit different from a two card suit where you would lead the highest. Now let's look at another example. This is example seven. Once again, you have a singleton spade. So should you lead that spade? This time, the answer is no. You have no trumps to establish, so creating a void is pointless. You cannot establish any tricks in your own hand and should try to help partner establish tricks in their hand. The best hope of doing this is to lead from your longest suit, as this is the one most likely to be partner's short suit. Now let's look at one more convention used when leading to suit contracts. In general, it is a bad idea to lead away from a king. This means don't lead a small card in a suit in which you also hold the king. Let's look at an example. This is example eight. You have a doubleton spade headed by the king. As you saw when you had a singleton king, it is possible for you to win a trick with the king so you do not lead it. But for the same reason, you should not lead any other spade. If you lead the two, the cleric can win the trick with the queen and then eliminate your king with the ace. This applies whenever the ace and queen are held by your opponents. It also applies to any suit where you hold the king along with any number of low cards. Now, let's look at the convention for leading from sequences against suit contracts. In the previous episode, you learned the convention for leading the top card of a sequence of three cards. This convention also applies to suit contracts. But in suit contracts, it also applies to sequences of two cards. This includes broken sequences with the touching cards at the top of the sequence. But if you have a broken sequence where the top two cards are not touching, Try to avoid leading the suit. If leading the suit is unavoidable, then use the convention for no trump contracts. Lead the top of touching cards. All the conventions illustrated in this episode apply to opening leads. And they also apply to subsequent leads. But you must be very careful because many are only valid while you hold trumps. Once declarer has drawn your trumps, making a void 
is of no use. Remember that all leading conventions are based on the lead decision factors that you learned in episodes 48 and 49. You must always think before using them. There are some circumstances in which these conventions should not be used. This episode covered more of the basics of bridge. It explained the lead conventions used when defending against a suit contract. In future episodes, I'll cover everything else you'll need to be a confident and successful bridge player. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Until next time, this is Jad reminding you that bridge is for everyone.